Yes, good morning. It's the first Sunday in July. Can you believe it? I can't. Look at this. I actually Middle can't. Middle day of the year. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you're watching Ireland AM and don't be alarmed if you hear any weird noises in the sky. It's World UFO. Mm -hmm. Jeez, that was very good. Hasn't it? That was very good. Yeah. yeah, I'm scared now. Yeah, well, coming up. From the ongoing RT scandal to a five billion euro budget package, we'll be taking you through what's in the newspapers this morning. It was a dramatic day in GEA yesterday, and we have all of today's action to look forward to as well. Uh, we'll be going through all the biggest sports stories later this hour. Now, if I was a single gal, but, uh, I, but I'm not, I'm no. spoken for, as they say, I'd be excited to announce that there's going to be a bunch of rugby hunks coming in. Ireland's Rugby Sevens have qualified for the Olympics, and three of their star players will be stopping by. And she's the voice responsible for hits such as Can the Can and Delegate Drive. Ultimate rock chick Susie Quattro. I think the original rock chick Susie Quattro. The OG. Yes, she'll be joining us after 11. Exciting stuff. Paul is back because he said the rugby players are on the way. <laughs> what else have you got coming up? How very dare He's you, lady. As well. <laughs> Morning, all. I'm on the catwalk with stylist Barbara Mead. Barbara, what are we looking at later this hour? So later we're going to look at four key essential items for your summer wardrobe. So everything from your Bermuda short through to your essential summer dress. Everything you need in that suitcase for the summer holidays, absolutely perfect. Back to you, Kat. Thanks, okay. Paul. Now let's check on the news you're waking up to today with Hannah Murphy. Thanks, Katia, and good morning. A fifth night of violence has rocked France following the funeral of a teenager of North African descent who had been shot by police earlier this week, sparking nationwide unrest. Tens of thousands of police were deployed in cities across the country and they reportedly fired tear gas at some protesters. More than 700 people have been arrested, but the worst of the clashes understood to have been in Marseille. French President Emmanuel Macron has postponed a state visit to Germany due to the ongoing unrest. A teenager who died following a crash on the M8 in Cork in the early hours of yesterday morning has been named locally as 16-year-old Johnny Foley. He was one of five teenagers in a car that was involved in a head-on collision on the motorway near Ballybeg in Mitchellstown. All of the other teenagers, including the driver, were taken to hospital to be treated for non-life-threatening injuries. It's understood the car had been travelling in the wrong direction on the M8. A woman in her 30s who'd been driving the other car was also taken to hospital with serious injuries. Gardaí are continuing to appeal for witnesses. The fallout from the RTE payment scandal is rumbling on as the Minister for Media, Catherine Martin, has requested talks with RTE's incoming Director General and the Chair of the RTE Board this week. It comes as Grant Thornton, the consultancy firm investigating financial matters in the state broadcaster, is also expected to complete the second stage of its investigation in the coming days. This phase will be looking at why a €120,000 top-up was paid to Ryan Tuberty between 2017 and 2019, and it will also examine the contracts of other top earners at RTE. Fine Gael has slumped to its lowest ever rating in the Ireland Thinks poll series. The research carried out for the Sunday Independent shows support for the party has fallen by a point to stand at 19%, with the same ranking for Fianna Fáil. The Green Party remains unchanged at 3%. The Labour Party also had its worst ever showing in the Ireland Thinks series, dropping by a point to 2%. Although Sinn Féin also dropped by a point, it was the most popular among those polled, with support for the party standing at 31%. The US remains in the grips of a heatwave this weekend, with heat alerts in place for millions of people. The heat and humidity in some areas has been described as life-threatening. Many people are on the move across the US for the 4th of July celebrations, but for some it's in very difficult weather conditions with 70 million people under excessive heat alerts across the country. The National Weather Service in the US says oppressive heat and humidity will continue in the southern US, particularly along the Gulf Coast and along parts of the West Coast in the coming days. In Dallas, Texas, temperatures are expected to exceed 38 degrees Celsius, four degrees higher than usual for this time of year. As well as dealing with heat waves, severe thunderstorms are predicted for parts of the Midwest. And with more than 500 wildfires raging in Canada, air quality alerts are also in place for millions of Americans. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. 
In China, heavy rainfall has led to major flooding in the southwest of the country. Many residents have been trapped in their homes because of the floods. Forecasters say heavy rains will continue in southern China over the next few days. Twitter users have lashed out at owner Elon Musk after thousands of people received messages saying their rate limit had been exceeded. Many thought it was an outage, but the CEO tweeted to say temporary limits have been imposed on the number of posts users can read in a day. Verified users can view up to 10,000 posts a day, while free unverified accounts can now only view 1,000 tweets. Mr Musk originally announced stricter limits, but gradually increased them. He claims the move is to deal with data scraping and system manipulation, but didn't explain further. Elsewhere, marine biologists have made an extremely rare discovery of an octopus nursery. The area found off the coast of Costa Rica plays host to groups of octopus mothers gathered to protect their eggs until they hatch. It may be one of only three such sites in the world to have been uncovered. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. This afternoon we'll see breezy conditions with a chance for sunny spells and temperatures ranging from 15 to 18 degrees. This evening we'll see continued sun with some scattered showers, most frequently in the northern half of the country. Temperatures will range between 13 and 17 degrees. Tonight will be a mix of clear spells and brief showers of rain, with more prolonged outbreaks spreading eastwards as we come into the early morning. Overnight temperatures will range from 9 to 14 degrees. Chill Insurance work harder, so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. All right, let's take a first check on your morning paper, starting with the Business Post, which leads with the headline, McGrath and Donoghue set to woo voters with €5 billion Euro budget package. Uh, the paper writes that the government is set to unleash a tax and spending package worth more than €5 billion Euros in a bid to win back angry voters ahead of key elections next year. On the front of the Sunday Independent is the headline, Cabinet to use special powers to probe RTE accounts. The paper reports that the government is to invoke special powers to appoint an outside auditor to review RTE finances. Over to the Sunday Times, it opens with RTE's bosses knew of Tuberty secret payments three years ago. The paper writes that RTE knew it had published false salary figures for Ryan Tuberty more than three years ago, but failed to correct the public record and in doing so helped conceal the existence of secret payments to its top presenter. On to the tabloids and the Irish Mail on Sunday leads with coalition plan to split RTE in half. The paper writes that the government intends to split RTE's public service and commercial functions in what is being called the biggest shake-up in the broadcaster's history. The Sunday Mirror opens with Tubbs Cause Scrap TV Licence. It writes that Ryan Tuberty's cousin, comedian David McSavage, has called for the TV licence to be scrapped as public anger over the RTE salary scandal mounts. The Sunday World leads with Forbes calls in the lawyers. It states that lawyers representing ex-RTE director General D. Forbes have been in correspondence with the station, sparking fears she could now be set to sue her former employers. And finally, the Irish Sun on Sunday goes with the headline, McGregor puts the boot into RTE. It writes that UFC star Conor McGregor has launched a foul-mouthed rant at snobby RTE amid the, amid the Tuberty payment scandal. Now, Elon Musk announced new restrictions for Twitter users yesterday, which will see them being limited with the amount of tweets they can read every single day. In a tweet, the uh, Tesla and SpaceX CEO outlined how verified users would be only able to view 10,000 tweets each day, which includes posts, comments and even ads, while unverified users will only be able to view 1,000 a day. So this morning, we want to know, do you still use Twitter or are you one of those who left the platform since Musk took over? Text us on WhatsApp on 089 or vote on our poll on your screens right now. I, myself, am fuming. So got home are from you? here yesterday. You're Twitter. You I'm Twitter yeah. through and through. I yeah. get my news from Twitter. It's the first thing I look at when I wake up just to see what's happened in the world overnight. And I was like scrolling. I went, what's wrong with the account? I couldn't see any more new tweets, but people could reply to mine. And about two or three hours later, I got this message or somebody from a news, yep. news outlet said, you know, this is what's happening. And I said to myself, here we go again. I always wonder, is this sort of stuff just his way? Because he's temperamental. 
He's almost like an attention seeker in a way of he has to do something to, you know, throw himself out. That's what you got That's what I got. That's exactly what I got. And I couldn't see any more tweets, but people could reply to my tweets. Right. So basically what it means is, is that it's like you're limited. You can only see a certain amount. But if I buy the blue tick thing, I could see as many yeah, as many well, tweets as I like. Well, as they said, verified you can have several. You can have it persons. all. So it's almost like a promotion for buying the tick. But now they do say it's temporary. Musk said the new change was just put in place to address extreme levels of data scraping and system manipulation. But I don't but know. A lot the... of people are outraged about this. Like... Why is this the first time in the whole apps? Yeah. Time, al time alive? Are we seeing something like this? Yeah. Like in, in its entirety? Yeah. But, but yeah, he, it's a rattle a cage. And is it a rattle a cage? That's my yeah. thing. He That's loves what to it looks it. like. Yeah. It's and a... I wouldn't mind. We've tried this thing before where we've gone off to a different platform. I know Matadoon or something like that was one of the other ones that they tried to kind of be the new Twitter and it just didn't work. We yeah. can all go, no, I'm getting rid of it now. Delete it on my phone. Yeah. It's, like, it's like getting rid of an ex. Yes. You're always going to give them a call at the end of the <laughs> night, though, aren't you? <laughs> You're always going to move back to Twitter. The way it works is that, you know, for, say, the reading of a, the reading of a tweet, the replying to it, Mm. or the DMing, or both, mm. will count as three calls. But even the ads... Are you for real? But, yeah. But the mm. ads count as well. Count as three. So, you know, there's the three gone already. So if you're not verified, yeah. within a couple of seconds, you have eaten into... I'm not... But I'd be raging with an ad, because an ad that I didn't ask for is there, and that's being and that counts. counts as well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. I... Uh, it, 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 it's... It, oh, it's just so... I just get so annoyed by it. Tell speak your mind. I know, I'm really annoyed by it. <laughs> just because you're trying to get your business and you're trying to do your yeah. business and all that. I can't even see who's liked my tweets. That's yeah. the problem. Like, you know when you go to go, oh, who's like that and they're being controversial or are you being yeah. a bit shady there? I can't even see who's liked them. So you're literally having to pay, but I refuse to hand over ten no. ninety nine a month or whatever it is to have a tiny little blue tick to the side of my name. Now, I do have some tips to reduce the likelihood of seeing the error message. The Twitter pro suggests only running one Twitter application at a time, not over using the refresh button. And if you do get the rate limit exceeded message, close down your Twitter applications and then reopen and then reset. Right, um, well, that's exactly what I'm going to so, do right yeah. this second. Yeah. <laughs> but do let us know this morning, are you an active Twitter user? And if you are, what do you use it most for? Text or WhatsApp 89 yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Coming up from the ongoing RTE scandal to World UFO Day, we'll be going through the top stories in Sunday's newspapers after this break. All right, welcome back from the ongoing RTE scandal to a bumper bu budget package. It's a busy morning for news, but before we discuss the top stories in today's newspapers in, or in order to be fully transparent, I would like to reiter reiterate that I am represented by Noel Kelly at NK Management. And to go through these stories and everything else in today's papers, we're joined by news editor with Bear Media, Laura Donnelly, and Irish Times political reporter, Jack Horgan Jones, you're very welcome. Now, we'll Morning. jump straight into the RTE story. So now the government is to invoke special powers to probe all RTE accounts, not just Tuberty's. Like, this has been described as unprecedented. Yes, well, it absolutely is unprecedented. Yeah. And I think what else is unprecedented is the degree to which there is going to be extra oversight of RTE's finances. Uh, we have the news this morning that Catherine Martin is considering using her powers, I think it's under the Broadcasting Act, to effectively uh, appoint an outside expert, an outside auditor, to come in and recheck the books. And I think a lot of people will be saying this morning, that's a sensible thing to do, seeing uh, what has emerged during the week about financial oversight and governance at, at the, the National Broadcaster. And um, we also know that, that the, the RT board itself has Grant Thornton, the accountancy firm, kind of acting as its uh, as it, as its own kind of financial watchdog, and they're thinking, as we reported in the Irish Times yesterday, of expanding the probe that Grant Thornton is running into into this slush fund itself. So beyond the Toberty payments, and more directly into into the use of this barter account that was termed a slush fund uh, in the Oireachtas during the week. There's also some really interesting polling findings, I think, in the yeah. Sunday Independent as well about how the public are feeling about all this. And and, the, and the, they're well, they're not too happy shall we say, because there's, and there's a real fear, because according to this poll, a lot of people are saying, 
I'm not paying my TV license anymore. Yes, yes. yeah, absolutely. Like we could have guessed with the public mood, but it's actually really great mm. to see this poll. So 89% of people say they're not happy with what emerged at the committees this week. You mentioned the TV license. Almost a third of people say they're not going to pay it now. There's always a percentage who didn't pay it anyway. That's mentioned, but people are really focusing on that now. Almost half of people say they don't <coughs> think Ryan Tuberty should be back on air, which is really worrying. For Ryan. Yeah, because it's and an extra six weeks that he's not going to be on radio, so people are... Well, well it's not, that's not confirmed that it could yeah. be six weeks. We, yeah. we do know he's not going to be on the air yeah. for, the, for, the, for the week ahead. Yeah. But there's, a, there's quite a few saying that he should be allowed back immediately. Yeah, there's a percentage saying he should be back or back within a week or two. Yeah. They also looked at who people are placing the majority of their blame on. So 73% are putting the blame for the issue with RTE management, 12% with D Forbes, 7% with Ryan Tuberty himself and 4% with his agent who was mentioned at the outset here. Given, given the emphasis that the RT board, or rather the RT executive board, were putting on the role of D Forbes at the Oireachtas, uh, the two Oireachtas hearings during the week, I think that that is a very revealing finding yeah. that, you know, that narrative has lost out, that narrative that, you know, D Forbes was more central to this than, than others, has lost out and mm -hmm. people are angry at the institution and angry particularly at the management and the executive side of the institution. I think that ties back into the, to the, the approach from the coalition. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they are now at the point where they are looking externally to the broadcaster to bring someone in to try and put a floor under this scandal because like when you take you know the 30 percent of people that are saying they may not now pay their tv license on top of the 20 percent that already say they, they, yeah. they don't pay it and then you think about maybe the commercial fallout from this mm -hmm. like you start to get into the the the, the kind of the, the area where there's a bit of a doom loop emerging and there yeah. could be real problems i think commercially yeah. and in terms of revenue for the broadcaster and at that point it it it, it grows from being a scandal about pay to something that could be, I don't want to say existential, but certainly very fundamentally challenging for RT as an organisation. And a threat to the government side of it as well. Um, mm. It's also reported in various papers this morning that RT could be split in half, potentially. Yeah, that's a headline on the Mail on Sunday. So there's a lot of uh, speculation there, and this is all coming from government sources. And the headlines out of that are RTE split in half, potentially 2FM to be sold off to a commercial partner, and also really, really worrying, and we don't know that this could be confirmed, is job losses as well. So yeah. that yeah. is certainly concerning for the, the staff in RTE. And just like something else, I suppose, I've spoken a lot about this in work all week, as have you, yeah. and I'll never forget the moment that press release dropped, but this study is saying 67% of people don't think there's been too much focus. Mm. So this story is going to run and run yeah. and run. Yeah, because that was the question. Like A lot of people, I think, people like our, ourselves who work in media, were talking to each other and saying, is this just a media bubble story? Yeah. And there's, I think uh, Colin Murphy has a piece in the Sindo asking that question, but like, just the, the crude metric of when we were looking at our, our traffic in the Irish Times during the week, like the, the live stories we were running on those Oireachtas committee hearings were through the roof. And I think that's supported by these poll findings, where it was 67% of people saying there's... Two thirds of yeah. people. Yeah, Not yeah. Because yeah. we're, we're kind of sitting today saying, this is like 10 days later and we're yeah. still talking it's remarkable. about it. But it's because there's a demand and, 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 and that result... It's that rarest of things. It's, it's, it's an important story that real yeah. people care about. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Now, moving on, we're reading into the Business Post this morning. The government is set to unleash a bumper budget. Talk us through that, Laura. Yeah, so the government is talking about a five million spend this year. So that's um, to woo back what they describe as angry voters. So they're looking at <coughs> increasing core spending by four billion and cutting taxes by one billion. Now, this is looking ahead to the budget in October and honestly every second time I'm here there's a story <laughs> like looking ahead to what we'll get in October so that's going to continue but I suppose people really want to know what it means for them so there's a possibility of income tax cuts tax breaks for private landlords and a major increase um, being proposed in the spend on housing which as we'll know is a much talked about topic mm. and yeah, people yeah. are crying out for somewhere to live okay but this budget is smaller than the one that they used in the last budget? Going on these figures, yeah. So last budget, the um, the core spending package, which is basically repeating yep. non-one-off measures, was 5.65 billion. And it looks like about 5 billion this year. Um, they have this rule that they introduced a couple of years ago where you're not allowed to increase that core spending, that permanent spending, by my, more than 5%. And if you take that rule, according to the briefing to the Business Post today, if you take that rule, that allows for spending increases of about 4.2 billion. And then the question is, how, do you, how much tax cuts can you get in on yep. top of that? Now, 
Now, the polling that we ran recently in the Irish Times suggests that there is much more of an appetite out there for spending increases as opposed to tax cuts. But we know that Fine Gael in particular have built their house early doors with that intervention, uh, the, the op-ed in the Irish Independent a few weeks ago calling for tax cuts. So they will consider the delivery of tax cuts yeah. to be a major signifier of their success or otherwise in the, in the budget. So I suspect we'll be looking for a large tax package to go alongside that 4.2 billion in spending increases. And then there's also the question, not to complicate it even further, of one-off one off, um, one off of spending, you know, like yeah. the kind of stuff like uh, support for your household bills that we saw in the last budget. And that's not covered by this five billion uh, package. OK, well, the thousand euro though, that the government are talking about, it's 20 euro a week. You know, so people are saying, no, I'd like to see health sorted, I'd like to see housing sorted rather than the 20 euro. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot of people are saying like this means nothing, not means nothing, but I don't see the benefit of doing that for me personally when we have people on trolleys, when yeah. we have people yeah. on uh, local authority waiting lists. So they would like to see money pumped into that because what are they going to do with, as you mentioned, the 20 euro a week that's substantial rather than dealing with the, the more major issues. OK. Uh, the other thing that uh, we, we picked out of the papers this morning uh, because it's World UFO yes. Day. Who knew? <laughs> Did you get my card? I sent it to both of you. <laughs> Happy It'll be World UFO Day <laughs> to those who celebrate. Uh, but but yeah, they, they want us to give a little more credence and uh, to UFOs that people claim are in our skies on a regular basis. Yeah, apparently lots of sightings. And one astronomer is saying we should be able to report these sightings to the Department of Defence. And he, um, Eamon Ansbow, has listed where the majority of sightings are. So they are for people in West Cork, South Kerry, Loch Key in County Roscommon and the North West. But also Dublin is quite active. Really? So, have you ever seen any? Oh, I haven't seen any. I, so he wants... I've seen a few stars in the skies, all right, as I'm you know, sitting in a taxi with my head back like this, <laughs> just hoping that Google Map, uh, the, 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 post, the postal code that I gave him will get us back to the house. But, but this expert is saying we should be able to log them somewhere, and yeah. he's suggesting the Department of Defence, because they do that in the US, and then they share that information so people know where but these UFOs are. He's also prompted uh, Sinn Féin TD John Brady to talk about it. What has he said or will he say? Yeah, I mean, Jack was very interested in the political side <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah. Uh, look, you know, um, Tell us, some, Jack. Someone, someone rings up a, uh, an opposition politician look for a quote. It's hard for them not to give one. But <laughs> in, in fairness to Tom Brady, he's managed to kind of to take this rather uh, extraterrestrial story and anchor it to something a little more a little more solid. And he's talking about the lack of a, of a kind of military grade yeah. radar in this country. We know we don't have what's called a primary radar system. Or, well, one has been budgeted for, but not bought yet. Mm. So he's linking it back to a uh, policy failing by the government, which is an impressive political manoeuvre from the opposition, you know, being <laughs> rung up and asked, asked to talk about UFOs and managing to blame the government, you know, I, I doff my cap to him. Well, I can see the election actually hanging on this one yeah. argument alone. Yeah. Anyway, good to see you both. Thanks Enjoy for coming in, Laura. <laughs> Jack, thank you. Coming up, we'll be chatting sport and there's only one place to start. Yesterday's GAA action. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back. It's time for your daily dose of fashion. Stylist Barbara Mee joins us and she's highlighting key pieces that are a must for your summer wardrobe. Barbara, so, thank you. Where are we going? Morning. Where are we kicking off first? Yeah. We're kicking off first with the Bermuda short. So we're seeing a lot more of the longer length on the, on the shorts this season and it suits all age groups. So we're going to start with this pair which are from Lush Boutique in Carlingford or also online at lushboutique.ie. What's beautiful about these is they're an elasticated waist. There's a stretch so in the very fabric. very comfy. Really comfy, yeah. great for traveling. You can add a blazer on with this look or you can wear them with a tank top or a blouse as we've done today. Also, they are um, starting from a size 12 right up to an 18. The they're big one frame, I'm obsessed with. And then, yes, we're all on. These are Dior inspired again from Lush Boutique. And then down to the jewelry there, we've got a three piece here from Bonnie and Pearl, bonniepearl.com. So you've got your earrings, your necklace and your matching tennis it's bracelet. Very dainty. But really very, very dainty. Nice. And again, I love to add jewellery to your casual yeah. look. Yeah. So for your holidays, for packing, adding this blouse in here, it's got a gorgeous long v-neck, waterfall sleeve on here. And again, down to that tennis bracelet, which just adds a little bit of luxury 
to your day holiday look. And then back in with the red, you've got a bold back bag. In red. Yeah. Bold bag, cross body, good zipping, lots of detail. You can also detach the strap and wear it in the evening as clutch, so multi-purpose. Oh. That again there was from Lush Boutique. And then finishing off with your little flip-flops, they have an embroidery anglaise little strap on them. So they're very feminine yeah. and a little bit more dressed than your basic flip-flop. Oh, now, hello, hat. Look this. This is, so this You're starting piece though, is the maxi, the maxi dress. dress. Yeah. Yes. So no summer wardrobe would be right without a maxi dress. Yeah. And this one here is from Ollie and Mel's, which is olliemelsboutique.com. Um, this is your absolute easy peasy peasy. The straps are adjustable, so you open them and tie them to your own height on the body. Yeah. The elasticated bust area is so flattering that even if you're big busted, in the elastication you support, yeah. so you don't need the straps then of a yeah. bra underneath. And that three, four, five tiered in your colorways, it is just so feminine, so floaty. I've never seen a maxi dress like that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, I love, isn't it? I love a, an outfit where it's just like one staple piece, piece and you don't need yeah. to do anything. Exactly. But, you... but we have Sophia Lorend, Natalia, yeah. up this morning <laughs> um, with this great hat here from Pennies. Then down to your gorgeous sunglasses. Again, from Pennies, keeping it simple so you don't have to spend the world to accessorise yeah. your summer wardrobe. Fabulous earrings here. So we are going Pearl. a bit, you know, from um, bonniepearl.com again there, and the necklace, keeping it ultra feminine, especially with the bow on the shoulder. And then down to the bracelet here as well, just again, adding a little bit of elegance to the look and finishing it off down at the end, going from the sparkle on the wrist to the sparkle on the toes. Hello. And these sliders add just that extra bit of glamour. So when you are going full on with that lovely hat and earrings and, you know, the, the very, as I said, Sophia Loren, Italian holiday look, adds a bit of sparkle on the end. And throw a high wedge with that, you've got a nighttime outfit exactly. as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Um, what a staple. This, and this is it, and yeah. it will fit into your suitcase in no time. So the four pieces this morning will keep you going all summer long and all holiday long. Next is the jumpsuit. Comfortable so, jumpsuit. <laughs> comfortable jumpsuit. It looks denim, but it's not. It's that gabardine fabric. Yeah. So it's soft and comfortable to wear. This is from ollymelsboutique.com again. And That's a good price point, online. though, something like really that. Really good price point. And if you are going to a festival or if it's just for your day wear. This is actually a piece, again, you could wear to the office with a little blazer over it. Really lovely lapel, gives a lovely focal point in the V. Yeah. The single um, button and then the little elasticated waist on that. And they are right down to the ankle. So skimming right down to just above the ankle. If you're not as tall as Daniela, they will go right down to the ankle. But you've, you've really glammed it up. Yeah, you've exactly. We're, not, we're not looking at this. Uh, yeah, the headband. <laughs> Festivals have started kicking in longitude this weekend, so we're kind of festivaling it up a little yeah. bit. So the headband there from bonniepearl.com and these amazing earrings, it just gives a kick of something special with it. Um, the sunglasses again from pennies and then down to the necklace and that lovely bracelet. It's that flat, not terribly dressy looking, but you get that shine of gold coming through. And then picking up down into the bag again from Ollie Mel's Boutique and also available at Blush Boutique. Um, the tote bag, so very Mark Jacobs. I was just going to say, it's the here. copy of the Mark yeah. Jacobs. Exactly, inspired. Inspired, sorry, inspired. not copied. Um, and this has a detachable shoulder strap as well, so great for travelling through airports, yeah. really fit everything in it. And if you're out and about sightseeing during the day, again, crossover body. And then the little sliders again, from pennies on the end, picking up the pink in the kick in the sunglasses. I love it. And the finally, dress. this is your essential holiday dress. <laughs> this will take you from the beach to the bar to the restaurant and beyond. It's also super comfortable. Back to the beach again. And back to the beach again <laughs> the following morning. The really lovely V-neck here on this. So it's got that knot front on it and the sleeve. So you'll see the sleeve and where it meets the body are, are at the same height. That's the essential, easiest shape you can wear in a dress. Those frames are really kind of framing the face as well. They yeah. are very, very Hermes inspired Origin. in color and design. And they, again, are from Lush Boutique. And the necklace and earrings, again, from Bonnie Pearl. We're going subtle with this and, and just keeping it matted and, and a bit down low. 
and then right down again to the bracelet there in the matching set from Bonnie and Pearl. And again, their packaging is beautiful. Great gifts also. And the bag, you the pulled bag, a colour from the dress. Yeah. Colour from the, the dress. And the frame of the glasses. And the frame of the glasses. Again, Very from nice. lushboutique.ie. And finishing it off with the same um, flip-flops from Pennies, keeping the fabric in, so you're keeping it a bit more feminine and less harsh. Less harsh. Less harsh. Well, this is very handy for anyone that is packing for a holiday this weekend. That's my whole suitcase. Yeah. Ready to go. Sorted. Never rapid, mind you. Rapid fire round essentials. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara. Now, Barbara. still to come, a trio of Olympians. The Rugby Sevens lads will be stopping by. Can't wait. Plus, we're making chicken satay in the kitchen and the Young Offenders, Hilary Rose, will be stopping by. Stay with us. We're live until midday. watching the second hour of Sunday's Ireland AM. It's the 2nd of July. Yeah, still to come, Harry, Jack and Terry from Ireland's Rugby Sevens team will be stopping by just days after qualifying for Paris 2024. Plus, she's best known for playing Mairead Maxuini in The Young Offenders. Actor Hilary Rose will be joining us to chat about the hit show and her new podcast. And she was first asked when she was planning to retire when she was just 35. <laughs> Yeah, madness, isn't it? Now into her 70s. There's no stopping Susie Quattro. She's joining us after 11. Paul's inside. What are you getting up to there? Good morning, gang. We've got chicken on the menu today. Lizzie Lyons joins us. Lizzie, I'm helping you flip your chicken, haven't I? Yes. Just doing a little bit. What have we got coming Still up? Flip. We have a really nice uh, chicken satay with a red cabbage slaw in some lovely pita breads and some uh, wedges. Some homemade wedges. Homemade wedges, yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Can't wait for that. All right, let's take another check on your morning paper, starting with the Business Post, which leads with the headline, McGrath and Donoghue set to woo voters with €5 billion Euro budget package. The paper writes that the government is set to unleash a tax and spending package worth more than €5 billion Euros in a bid to win back angry voters ahead of key elections next year. On the front page of the Sunday Independent is the headline Cabinet to use special powers to probe RTE accounts. The paper reports that the government is to invoke special powers to appoint an outside auditor to review RTE finances. Over to the Sunday Times, it opens with RTE's bosses knew of Tuberty's secret payments three years ago. The paper writes that RTE knew it had published false salary figures for Ryan Tuberty more than three years ago, but failed to correct the public record and in doing so helped to conceal the existence of secret payments to, the, to its top presenter. On to the tabloids and the Irish Mail on Sunday leads with coalition plan to split RTE in half. The paper writes that the government intends to split RTE's public service and commercial functions in what is being called the biggest shake-up in the broadcaster's history. The Sunday Mirror opens with Tubbs cause scrap TV licence. It writes that Ryan Tubbs' cousin, comedian David McSavage, has called for the TV licence to be scrapped as public anger over the RTE salary scandal mounts. The Sunday World leads with Forbes calls in the lawyers. It states that lawyers representing ex-RTE Director General Dee Forbes have been in correspondence with the station, sparking fears she could now be set to sue her former employers. And finally, the Irish Sun on Sunday goes with the headline, McGregor puts boot into RTE. It writes that UFC star Conor McGregor has launched a foul-mouthed rant at snobby RTE amid the uh, Tuberty payment scandal. Can we do a massive shout out? One of our own, the gorgeous Catherine Stewart, who's a beloved presenter, producer here on Ireland AM, is getting married this week. Yes, Cass and our fiance Colin Reid are tying the knot this Thursday in Tipperary. We're wishing the couple a lifetime of happiness together. Congratulations to Congrats. both of you. Sending oh, all the love. Oh, look at the picture there. Congrats, uh, <laughs> Sending you all the love. Talking of weddings, right? Uh, uh, stories come out about a couple who didn't kind of take things normally when it came to their wedding. So normally you do the ceremony, yeah. you yeah. do the picture. Yeah. Then you go off and you'll have your, your shindig afterwards. These two bolted and went to a concert. What? They literally yeah. did, the, did the ceremony. Uh, a couple in England, Devon Collins and Mitchell Fellows, were due to get married at the beginning of June and were gutted to discover that their big day clashed with Harry Styles' concert oh, in gosh. Wembley. Not so, Harry Styles. So what did they do? They got married. They said goodbye to their guests. They jumped on a tube and spent the evening with Mr Styles in Wembley Stadium. 
I kind of love that. I love it, but I would have loved it if they had invited everybody. There they are. There. Oh my god! When you ditch the wedding reception to see Harry Styles at Wembley. Wait, so instead. mom and dad, Nana, Grand, they were all left. They were, all the, they were on the pub eating soup. <laughs> there These <you>. two. <laughs> <laughs> These two were having the time of their life at Harry Styles. <laughs> now I kind of love it because that way, a you've saved a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to. You don't have to talk well, to people you don't like. Yeah. People back there. It's just like you're not just not <laughs> feeding yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine coming back dressed in Harry Styles merch. Yeah. <laughs> well, did Harry spot them? No, they were uh, kind of. It says there that they were kind of raging that he didn't see them. Oh. And you know, but they still had a ball. My question is, who would you leave your wedding for? Beyonce, Giselle, uh, again, Nose. babe. You know that. You've seen Beyonce more than I've seen I my know, mother. I see her twenty million more times. <laughs> what about you, Martin? Ah, oh, the Stones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know Jenny will come with me. So yeah. it'd be cool. See, yeah. so you could do the same thing. But, but it's funny. A few years ago, Rod Stewart played here, and he played at the ODS, and which is next next to uh, what was then the Four Seasons. And all of a sudden, Rod was you know, kind of going, "What are you? What, what's going on?" And and then all of a sudden, the camera turned, and there was a bride and groom in the front row, now really? standing in the piss. Wow, and, that's uh, and, and he wondered if it was a joke, and she's, no, we got married today. So Rod I went down to them, took his tie off, gave it to them as a souvenir, and uh, congratulated them and wished Somebody them well. Somebody else. And they stayed till the end of the gig. They didn't just go back that into the That would make it so though. worth it if he actually spotted you. Like yeah. Somebody else who I know loved to pop into a wedding, he's a friend of mine, singer Gavin James. If he's, oh, yeah. if he's playing yeah, yeah. somewhere, he loves nothing more than just kind of peering <laughs> the head in, seeing if it's a bit of crack, and that man will stay there. That man can drink <laughs> a pint like nobody's business. Oh, so what you're saying is Gavin is a, is a wedding crasher. He's a wedding crasher. He's a wedding crasher. And he loves nothing he's just more. For free food and drink. <laughs> some, some Gavin, you've been outed. <laughs> Sorry, I got you. <laughs> anyway, we'd I'm love brilliant. to know who, who, if if the occasion occurred again, or maybe if it's yet to come, would you leave your wedding and who would you go and see in concert? We want to know. 0896 treble one treble one. Up next, the latest members of Team Ireland, Jack, Terry and Harry uh, from the Rugby Sevens will be with us just days after qualifying for Paris 2024. We'll see you in a few minutes. Back to Ireland AM. Ireland's Rugby Sevens team are on their way to possible Olympic glory. We are joined by Harry McNulty, Terry Kennedy and Jack Kelly from Ireland's Rugby Sevens team who have just returned home as European champions and Olympic game qualifiers. Guys, congratulations are in order. Yeah, yeah. We are very welcome to the show. Looking a bit bleary-eyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you done celebrating? Is this it now? Have the drinks stopped yet? Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Listen, yeah. no, look, congratulations. But, but you know, I'm just thinking that heading into that final game, you know, yeah. it, 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 is the pressure on? You're thinking, right? We win this, we, we were champions, but we qualify for the Olympics, or do you just treat it as another game we have to win? Um, there's obviously both sides of it. There's the pressure to try and qualify again. You want to try and keep the mentality the same. Um, the way that the competition was run is that if you made it to the final, that you automatically qualify for a secondary like option to qualify as well later next year. So we kind of went into that knowing like if it doesn't go our way, we still have another chance to qualify for the Olympics. But obviously we wanted to qualify straight yeah. off. So you don't want to use the safety net. No, yeah. not at all, but it's nice to have it there. But Jack, what was it like even before like the atmosphere going into the game, knowing right, this could be it, we could qualify here. Yeah, like like the nerves are obviously there. Mm -hmm. You can't you, you you try not to think about it, try kind of like keep it at the back of your mind, but um, you can definitely tell that there's a different energy going yeah. to the, into those kind of games, and you know, especially some. Like, thankfully, we've we've been there before, yeah. so it did feel somewhat familiar. But mm -hmm. there's quite a few new guys on the squad as well, so just conscious of like keeping everyone, you know, calm, and you know, it's still yeah. the same game that you've that you've played yeah. all the way up until now. So thankfully, it, you know, it went went well in the end. But, yeah. Okay. yeah. Final whistle. What was it like? It was incredible, yeah. I suppose the last time we qualified for the Olympics, it was in Monaco during COVID. Didn't have any family or friends there. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> this time, totally different. Um, getting to go up into the stands to all our family and friends there was incredible and to see the emotion. 
that they went through throughout the whole weekend yeah. um, and to share share it with them uh, was, yeah, it was incredible for us. Yeah. Got some great pictures up there on the screen. Now, the last time you did qualify was only three weeks before. Yeah. So how yeah. does it compare now, knowing you have... But, Harry, what's it like now, knowing you have way more time for prep? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. So it was as you said, three weeks before, but because of COVID, it was actually a two-year wait before we even had that tournament, yeah, where it was only yeah. meant to be a year. So we were training at home, didn't really know if the tournament was even going to take place, whether the Olympics was going to take place. So for us to qualify that first time was just surreal. We couldn't, we really couldn't put it into words at all. Now having a year, the women's program have, have also qualified a year ahead. So that yeah. means that the two programs yeah. now are all systems go. We've got everything that's going to be planned out for the, for the full year ahead. It means that we can just be fully prepped going and like enjoy the road in as well. Like, it was a blur last time. Okay, yeah. I'm going to borrow Love Island speak. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because we know there was a Love Islander in the squad. <laughs> um, but but you're, you're one of the OGs. Mm. Yeah, yeah, one of the OGs. So the, the program set up back in 2015. Yeah. Uh, always with, you know, the goal of bringing the Irish team to the Olympics, which we've managed to do now. And, yeah, my first cap was in Bosnia. Yeah. So that's where the first Irish sevens team we ever had to play. And we made our way all the way through Europe. And we've been all around the world. We've played in some amazing places. And to be a part of the beginning of the program and, mm -hmm. and making it all the way through here has been been amazing and very fortunate to do, do so. Do you remind these guys, listen, I, I, did, the, I did the spade work, I did the ground work. <laughs> no, to be fair, <laughs> Terry's done I've been there as well. Yeah. So I, uh, I didn't play that Bosnia one, but I did play, play yeah. in Croatia about a week or two after. Yeah. So being there... Uh, Good distance myself as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jelly, jelly kind of gets the brunt. He's a blow in. But the team has had such a meteoric rise. Like you can obviously see the difference now of of how yeah. the game is, mm. and then the growth in the game as well. Yeah, it's, uh, Ireland doesn't have sort of a background in sevens. You, mm -hmm. From a club point of view or like grassroots, you wouldn't really have too much going on. You have the Kinsale yeah. sevens and like midnight sevens and marble sevens. Um, every now and again but if you were to compare it to like our neighbors over in England like they would have a full summer of what's like the summer social sevens and there's mm. people playing it all year so for us to be able to take rugby with very little sevens background and be able to do what we've done over the short period of time has been fantastic. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. For, for those for those who aren't familiar with it, Jack, could you just, apart from the numerical difference, the difference between <laughs> uh, you know regular rugby union and, and the sevens? Yeah, so it, it, it does probably look a lot different. Um, there's only seven of us on the pitch, uh, seven minutes a half. Yeah. So it's uh, it's short and sharp, but it certainly feels a lot longer when you're out there playing. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, there's a lot of space on the pitch and it's very fast. And um, yeah, it usually means that we're dying for half time. <laughs> about two, I know I definitely am. Anyway, Harry usually plays every minute. I, every now and again, I'll play every minute of a game and I look to him and I'll go, Right, that's me for the weekend. You can play everything else, you know? um, so yeah, it's tough on the lungs, it's tough on the body, but it's uh, it's great, it's great fun, yeah. and the crowds, the crowd at sevens tournaments are always uh, always in a good party mood, and uh, yeah, it's it's a good event. Oh, right. oh, we always hear it's great crack, yeah. yeah it, it is good <laughs> but, fun. Um, Terry, now I'll get this right because you've been named World Rugby's seventh player of the year back in November. What was that like to get that recognition from your peers? Yeah, no, it was incredible and um, didn't expect it at all. Yeah. Yeah. We just had a we had a good year on the series as a yeah. team, and um, I was happy to play my part. And yeah, to get nominated originally, I was uh, I was absolutely delighted with that. And then to be named, um, yeah, it was incredible and um, really surreal at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Did, did did the rest of you have to keep his feet in the ground? <laughs> <laughs> if, you him, if you can catch him, you can catch him so quickly. <laughs> yeah. no, we're delighted for him, though. I mean, like. Again, as you said, like sevens didn't start that long ago, yeah. and then it was seven years since so 2015 when this yeah. whole thing started, and then we have the best sevens player in the world. Like it's, it, it's pretty fantastic. It, it, yeah, testament <laughs> to the work that you've all put in, and it is fantastic. So no pressure. But are we looking for the golden parasite? <laughs> I, th I think we're going to have to say we are, yeah. The last time, uh, obviously, we qualified so late and didn't quite go as, as we would have liked. So this time, um, yeah, we're definitely, that's definitely the goal. And it's going to be difficult, but we'll, we'll give it everything we have. OK. Yeah. Uh, Greg O'Shea will be shouting you on yeah. for a change. Yeah. 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 What was he like to live with and play with after he'd, after he'd won Love Island in 2019? 
That's well, it's not a funny story, but like yeah. we didn't know he was even doing the show. Because well, you couldn't tell. Yeah. 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 So uh, last time when we tried to qualify for the Olympics, um, we had a tournament that was very similar to this one that we didn't manage to qualify through. But Greg was playing in that, and then that evening he was leaving, <laughs> and he told us that oh he had something going on at home that he had to leave and go home early for. And then yeah. by the time we all got home, I, w I went for dinner with one of my friends and. He picks up his phone. He's like, "Greg's on Love Island." I'm, like, what? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's gone home because something's happened and he needs to leave. I was with him 12 hours ago, so uh, he kept that one under wraps. But again, you know, we were delighted for him. We had a big house party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hugo yeah. Keenan watching house. party. Yeah, yeah. watching party. Yeah. So Hugo Keenan now playing for the 15s. Like he used to play with yeah. us as well. Yeah. And we yeah. all went over to his house and watched it and had had a blast. Well, well I'm sure yeah. it was a memorable. It, it certainly was. It certainly was. <laughs> I, I've been giving grief to Cassia, you know, because she's from Dublin. She's wearing green. You know, Dublin are playing Mayo today. I didn't but know. It's, she's on brand with the rugby seven. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. At least her matching. Look, guys, what are your summer plans, real quick? Because you've got a little bit of time to relax. Or do you? Or do you? We do, yeah. We do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have a trip to Croatia planned uh, as a squad. Uh, so it could be quite a few days there. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then we all have a few yeah. different kind of holiday yeah. bits ourselves. You're going to head up to Magic Glory, yeah. do the pilgrimages. Exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Look, good luck for Paris next year and Best congratulations. The European chat, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Good to see you, lads. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks, Thanks very much, guys. Okay. Uh, coming up, we're having chicken in the kitchen. No. And lads, yeah, you hang around with feed. <laughs> protein up. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're like us and you've had one too many takeaways over the last few weeks of summer, I don't know who you're talking to, <laughs> we've got just the thing for you. Well, Lizzie Lyons from Lizzie's Little Kitchen is here with some shredded chicken satay you lot can make at home. Oh, sounds so good. When you come on, Lizzie, you always make the best. So where are we starting with this? We are starting uh, with some raw chicken. It's really easy. Um, if you had leftover chicken, you could use it as well and shred it up. But yeah. for just for today... Uh, I have the raw chicken here because it'll be lovely and fresh and so on and so forth. But anyway, I've cut up the chicken into strips here and I have some uh, grated garlic and I have some ginger. Have you gone with breasted chicken? Uh, yes, I have. And can you go with other... With other uh... You certainly could, yeah. Just okay. give them a quick flip in the plan and off you go. you go. Yeah. Was that um, ginger you put it... And is that to kind of give it an Asian style? Yeah, yeah, okay. and give it a little kick. So we have some fresh garlic, fresh grated ginger. Mm. Um, I'm putting in a little bit of fish sauce. Ooh. That'll give it some saltiness. Okay. We have some soya. You wouldn't be too worried about the fish and the soya together. The, that's no, the, yeah. the ginger will break it up and the garlic. We have some lovely creamy coconut. Lovely. Yeah. And now we've got some peanut butter, whatever you have at home. Peanut Smooth, butter. crunchy. Yeah. Um, so we'll just get that in there. So this is obviously for the satay side of things, isn't yeah. it? This is for yeah. the satay side, yeah. Exactly. So we're going to get that in there and we will mix it all up. And what does the peanut butter do in terms of, like, flavour? So it'll give it a lovely nutty flavour to it. It'll caramelise the chicken when you're frying it. Um, and it'll give it that, you know, kind of Asian, a different yeah. twist on it. So we're going to just mix it all up there. Um, ideally, now, if you had time at home, um, you would marinate this for 20 minutes, maybe two and a half hours. If you had that time, yeah. you could do it the night before as well. Um, Does it matter about what sort of peanut butter you use? Because you know the way sometimes when you're talking, especially if you're training and stuff and you're eating the, the big healthy stuff, or can you just use store-bought, whatever you kind of see? You can use store-bought. You can, you can get a dry peanut powder now as well, which is really high in protein. So for, like, if you were really sporty, this would be really good for you. <laughs> you know, it would be really high in protein with the peanut butter and the chicken and, you know, like Kerry players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So our, our taste testers today might, might be in for a bit of a treat today yeah. anyway, yeah? So, so that all goes in the pan then, obviously. Yeah, so we're going to get this into the pan. I have the pan on, just at a medium heat, and we're going to fry it up. But ideally, you really want to let this marinate because you get the flavours into it, and it'll tenderise the chicken as well for you, do you know? And yeah. am I right lovely... in saying there's no oil in it? Because you've got that coconut element to it. There's It's fatty... In, yeah, in sort of the marinade. Yeah, there is. You can put a little bit of um, oil into it, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon, but to keep it that bit healthier, I didn't bother yeah. put it in. All right. Yeah. Now, so I'm just going to pop that up there. All right. 
So now, the next thing we're going to get onto is our slow. Everyone's mad to make a slaw. Is it just because it's so easy, so healthy, or what? So easy, so healthy, so versatile. All of the above. <laughs> yeah, the texture, the flavours, you can do so much with it. Mm. Um, so I have some red cabbage sli um, grated inside here, and I have a little bit of carrot. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in just a little bit of red wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. I also have some salt in there. So you have a little bit of salt, you have your, uh, your red wine vinegar and I'm going to mix it all up. Now, the red wine vinegar will bring out a lovely colour in the red cabbage. It'll soften it down. And now I'm going to put in some lovely fresh mango. So mango. it'll add sweetness Ooh. to it. Yeah. And now I have lovely coriander. Is the, is, would, you, would you have fruit in something like that? No. I, but, but I, I, I trust... I'm at a point in life where I trust... Yeah. Oh, Jack. I trust Lizzie Lyons. And I trust Lizzie Lyons, so I With my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, with my pity. <laughs> so now, look, you see all... The, I, I don't know if the camera can see it, but look at the beautiful colours inside oh. that, the ruby of the red cabbage, the lovely fresh mango. Perfect for and summer mint. barbecues Beautiful, well, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. The colours are nearly as nice as the curry colours. Ooh, I know. Do you want me to stir <laughs> this chicken for you? Yeah, we'll bang it up a little bit there now. I have become your chicken flipper. You are. <laughs> you're, you're the best flipper I have. It's going to say a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're just going to make a little bit of the sauce for the satay. So I have some coconut milk inside here. Yeah. I have peanut butter, a little bit of chilli, and the fresh ginger. Before we got very health conscious with coconut milk and almond milk and all yeah. the rest of it, what would people use before? Because I know there is some people at home who still will be like, ah, no, I wouldn't be mad at that coconut stuff. Was it just, is it just general yogurt and general milks in general? Yeah, you could, yeah. if you wanted to, if, if this brings a nice element to it, but if you were, if you didn't like the coconut milk, by all means, you could use a little bit of uh, yogurt, natural yogurt for yeah. it. Right. But it still gives that consistency, because you can see there with the coconut, it's yeah. great consistency. Exactly. So yeah. now we have our sauce made, right? And mm. this is one that I have started shredding up. Now, I wasn't eating this, I was shredding it, OK? <laughs> so I just shredded it earlier. So when your chicken comes out, look, all you have to do, if you want to shred it, is a knife and a fork. Let on that you're, you're getting it ready for a baby. You know yeah. the way you break it up for if you're making a baby roller in. No. no, we don't. No, not familiar. <laughs> Moving swiftly along. For, for me, it's the dogs. If you're getting the chicken ready, right? For the dogs. If you're there, you go. Um, so we'll just break it up so it's nice and shredded. Yeah. And then you have it ready for your pitta, okay? Okay. So now we're going to move along. I have some pittas over here, mm -hmm. and I'll get my glove again there, please, Paul. There you go. Thank you very much. We're all gloves today. Anytime I try cutting a pitta, it just break like breaks up on me. I'm the worst at it. Do anyway. you toast it first? You're supposed to lightly toast it first and no, then I it don't. cuts easier. Yeah, that that's why. Right. You're okay. baiting into it with a knife yeah, and it's just literally. tearing yeah. through. I have this toasted now, but what's going to happen to me is it's all going to break off as I give you a lecture on how <laughs> yeah, to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this basically, like, toasting it, it kind of makes it a bit more airy. Yes. You just slice into it nicely. Yeah, and it makes it easier. And it's the healthier option as well. It, the, the piss is the healthier option. Yeah, so yeah, I have some brown pita. So we're going to put in a little bit of the shredded cabbage in there, or the, the slaw. We're going to add in our chicken. Lovely, some marinated. It's beautiful, actually. The smells are gorgeous. The, the, yeah, the, they're the, lovely. The peanuts, and, the satay really kind of And wait till you it. taste the mint and the herbs together. And now we we'll get a little bit of that sauce again over it. Oh, lovely. Oh, so you just dollop that. That has nothing yeah. to do with like a marinade or anything. That's just no, a dollop on sauce. No, that's just a sauce. We should have a spoon now. Ah. Like a spoon. We get creative here. Yeah. It's all good. So now that is your, your beautiful pita made. And you also made some... Um... I made some lovely um, wedges. So all I did was I, I wedged baby potatoes, put a little bit of salt and pepper and herbs on it, and a little and bit here, of here And here are our three testers. taste testers. <laughs> I feel like yeah. this, is, this is something you could eat like while Here you're we training, go. isn't it? This oh, is yeah. My handy yeah. helper. <laughs> My handy, yeah, well, handy is one word. Let's go. <laughs> no pressure, Paul. Kat, it looks like you've actually joined I the know, team I there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off the eighth player. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. And then I'll throw this Pass down them one. Yeah. Lads, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. enjoy. Get stuck just in. unbelievable. Oh, you. See, these look absolutely And we don't want to know pretend by here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Let's go for it. In. Get stuck in there and have yeah, a taste. Do. I think we've we'll lost there. We'll eat. These are for my journey. <laughs> Three for the big fella. Now, you're growing, lads. You need to go. Now, 
What's the verdict? Go for it. Right, yeah. sorry. Boys are going to take it. We're like <laughs> taking all Lizzie, the food. Lizzie's like, finally, someone that actually gets stuck in. Look at I this. know pressure. I don't think we've ever had people on the show who've gone as, as heavy yeah. and as tasty. We need mm. more facial expressions. How good is it? Mm. 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 Incredible. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 That'll do. So good. Enjoy it, Lizzie. Thank Stunning. you so much. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Nail the brief, as always. Now, full recipe details yeah. are up on our website, <laughs> as always. Or if you're in this show this weekend, Lizzie will be there this afternoon. So call in and tell her that we sent you. Ask for the saucy rolls as well. Coming up, the Young Offenders actor Hilary Rose will be stopping by for a catch-up. We're back after this short break. All right. Our next guest is best known for playing the part of Mairead McSweeney in The Young Offenders. Now, Hilary Walsh is preparing for her upcoming podcast show in July and she's here to tell us all about it. But first, let's take a look at her in action. So why don't you take that little scumbag son of yours and go back to that kip of a house you live in and get off my property. <laughs> oh, oh, you have to break in my nose. I hope you're only fix it for you. What's going on? She's have to break in my nose with our big smelly fish hands. Those fish don't have hands, so that makes no sense. Stop brushing me with your broom. Oh, you wish I'm not brushing, I'm pushing. Pushing me with your broom? <laughs> oh, Nancy! <laughs> Oh, God. Hillary joins us now. Hillary, great to see you. Like, so good to see you. But, like, we're cackling here just sitting watching that. For you, <laughs> it must just bring back the most amazing memories and also the most immense amount of pride. Absolutely. And it's funny, you know, I got the chance to review season one to three again recently. And it was just, that's why I chose that clip, because it's just so funny. It's yeah. so ridiculous and so funny. And it was great fun making it. And I suppose you kind of forget when it's so long ago and you're making something, you know, yeah. I mean, that was, when did we do that? Probably four years ago, maybe? Yeah. So, you know, it's nice to be able to review it again. And yeah, really proud of the work. It's lovely. Is it hard to, like, sorry, yeah. it, I was just, that came to my head. Is it hard to keep a straight face when you're yeah. trying to, A, because they're people you love to work with. Sometimes we giggle at each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I can only imagine what that's like. Definitely, and especially that scene, trying to get that scene made, because it's so silly. And there was so much action as well. And like after that particular moment as well, we all kind of end up in this big fight on the lawn, which was just so funny. It was really great. <laughs> how many takes? How many, in oh. other words, how many times did she have to get a smack in the face with the brush? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. I would say, I mean, you're getting close to 10 takes to get stuff like that right, just the coordination yeah, of yeah, it. You know? yeah, it's great. yeah, so that nose is well broken. Yeah, you, you like, The Young Offenders is obviously quite close to you because Peter, your husband, was the creator, yes? Yes, correct. Is that, is that kind of crazy to... Because it's always within the house, it's always within life, it's always within... Is it everything you discuss every single day when it was around and you were kind of putting it together? Or were you very good at just being like, no, 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 hold on a minute, work is work? I think when we did the film, we were very much involved and it was like our everyday life because the film was so different. The film, you know, was something we kind of made ourselves and we, it was, you know, uh, called in so many promises, funded, yeah. you know, self-funded yeah. it. So that was really, but I think once the, se the series started and we'd had our first son, Jake, as well at that point. So once that started, we were like, no, okay, now we need to have a divide where, you know, we've got work life and you've got home life and now we have Livy as well. So, you know, Fantastic. we're very much like family focused more than anything. But, but do, I mean, did you spend your time like going around Cork, seeing something, being in the situation or just a location going, make a note, make a note? I think when you're living in Cork, it's kind of like it's filtered through you the yeah. entire time, you know. So definitely, yeah. I mean, I think you'd hear stuff or see stuff and you go, OK, that needs to go in. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I suggested the bus for Billy. Yeah. I don't know, actually. I don't, well, that was Peter's one, I think. That was yeah. definitely Peter, I'd say. But on that note, was there moments where you kind of went, can we, can, can we, and then have to rethink whether you can or cannot do it? I mean... The, I think the whole series, you have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the language. We, all, we would always yeah. have, like, a language cap, you know? There's a certain amount of F words or whatever else yeah. that you would yeah. have to cap on um, per episode. Even slang, I suppose, because Cork have... Like, dub, dubs have a slang, Cork have a slang. You know, we, we kind of watch them being careful to bridge the gap where you just like, ah, no, caution to the wind. 
whatever's whatever's from the rebel county we're throwing it in there. I think caution to wind with that one definitely it's yeah. like you know they'll either it's not actually at one point we were for the movie especially we were thinking of do we need subtitles you know and and but we didn't do it in the end but there was a talk of maybe we should have subtitles but um, no it was caution to the wind it was all cork or nothing or, or, or at least a, a, a little note handed to everybody so they can read it before they yeah. go on to know exactly what this means and what that means. Yeah. Or a Google Translate app or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. Um, you're you're actually doing a live show. Yes. And the cast are going to join you on stage. Yes. I, so this, tell us about this. So, how the idea started? It came from the podcast Live Wild. I love the way the wind, and, and the wind know, is blowing off. Just said Live Wild, on and it's almost, almost like somebody just went. Boom. The wind is blowing up. So the podcast is called Live Wild, okay? And this is, I released season one last year and the inspiration for the live show came from the podcast. So on episode 10 of the podcast, I interviewed Chris and Alex who play Connor and Jock. And I thought, God, wouldn't it be amazing to get all the cast together to do this? How do I do this? And then we decided, well, I decided we never did a Young Offenders live show because we all had other commitments. It just felt like it was too much. But all the theatres were really crying out for a live show for it. So I went, okay, bridge the gap. So I'm bringing Live Wilds, the podcast, in conversation with the cast of The Young Offenders to the Opera House on Saturday, July 22nd. And that's going to be, it'll be a really, really, really special, possibly one-off event where I host the podcast, but I talk to them about everything that went on in the show. And we're going to play some clips from season one to three and just discuss everything, do Q&A sessions. It'll be brilliant. That's amazing because so much so with with shows like this that we've beloved and we've, we've watched and really kind of got behind, we want to know what happened behind the scenes and, you know, we want to know what's what's gone on. Speaking of behind the scenes, I know you've just wrapped season four. Yes. Filming. Yes. What can we expect? Where, where <laughs> has, where, I, I'm, even, I'm even afraid to ask, where has life gone now? Oh, it's just, I mean, obviously I can't tell you much. But oh, it's I just, hate when they say that. I know, that. and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know how annoying that is. But it was just great to bring us all back together. And I think that really solidified all our friendships, relationships, both on screen and off screen yeah. as well. And, you know, it's moving to BBC One, which is a prime time slot. So it just has a slightly different shift to it, a slightly different feel to it, but it's it's going to be great. That's okay. all I can tell you. Moving to the BBC, is there a bigger budget? Um, God, I don't know. I'm not involved in that process. <laughs> <laughs> is there a bigger fear? We're moving no, to the BBC because it's a different audience. No, and... not really. No, I think we all, it, it's, it's again, it's different when you're making something to, you know, to when it goes on air. So when yeah. it's on air, we might be a bit jittery about, oh my God, we've got, you know, millions more people watching. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Pushing the trolley around the supermarket must have changed greatly over the last number of years. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Every day I would get some kind of selfie or comment or, you oh, know, Just people looking well to wishing. see what's in your trolley. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be very disappointed. They're getting the cheap burgers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, you've gone through the process, any any old job an actor, any old job in person, but I know you had a career as a DJ. Yeah. And it was quite, you were DJ her, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Did you love that life? I did, I did. Like, I suppose, I always look at music and I'm very thankful to that time because, like, I was able to work outside normal nine to five hours, which really kind of helped my acting career take off. You know, so I was working weekends or late nights, so it meant that I was able to show up and do yeah. auditions yeah. and be able to focus on that. So, yeah, I loved it, but, yeah. And as, a, as like I said, as a job and actor, it's important to have all those skills under the one belt so that you, you never stop working, I suppose. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah and leads yeah. you into the podcast now. So you've got, you've got the Live Wild podcast with, with the Young Offenders. It's going to be live, live on stage. Will yeah. season two then naturally come out back to the format that you had with season one? Or? For the podcast, yeah. yeah. I'm recording that now at the moment as well. So that will come out probably September. I like to take my time and just find people I'm really interested to talk to. And, yeah. you know, it's all about scheduling for them as well. So, yeah, that would be But it is, it, it lives up to the name. It is about living wild. And you cover yeah. everything from, from food to nature. Yeah. It's obviously to, touching on something you're very passionate about. I am. I think it's like, I love, I mean, the podcast for me felt like it was all me. It was totally my creative project. It's all the stuff that I'm interested in. So it's really, like you said, you talk about nature, you talk about food, you know, like regenerative farming practices, culture. But then there's also like the celebrity interviews, you know, yeah. where it's like, I'm, I'm interested in people who are living outside the kind of mainstream uh like thinking outside the box for themselves yeah. and their career follows that path so when it came to Young Offenders and the, the latest season I know there was an a- open casting an open ca- kind of casting call for roles how important is that because you know yourself 
we're all dying for the job, we're all vying for the gig, but as a young actor trying to get in, that's hard to, to nail through that. How important was that to open that process? I think it felt like a no-brainer, really, at the start. Like, we did that for the film, and it was about trying to find authenticity as well, and young actors, because the roles were young, so, yeah. you know, they yeah. needed to be younger. Like, Alex, I think, might have been 16 when we first met him, and Chris <laughs> was probably 18, I'm thinking. You know, and now they've grown into these fabulous young men, yeah, you know, yeah. so... Yeah. It's lovely that we were able to open it up and to do that. And it is, it's really tough because you see people coming in the door and you go, oh my God, they're amazing, but they're just not right for the roles. There's yeah. a little bit of that as well, where we try to, rem you know, remember those people and then slot them in later on down the line where they do fit. You know? yeah, love that. Yeah. Love that. We loved it, absolutely loved it. Yeah, and we we're delighted there's a series for yes. it. Like, like we were having belly laughs looking yeah. at that clip because it took us back. We can't wait. Congratulations, Hillary. Thank you so Hillary. much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Hillary Thanks, Rose. Guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, tickets for Hillary's live wo uh, Live Wild podcast are available from corkoperahouse.ie. Still to come, we're chatting to the original rock chick, Susie Quattro, and we're finding out if UFOs are actually real. Stay with us. We're here with you till 12. That's it. Yes, hello again, it's just coming up on 11 and you're watching the final hour of Sunday's Ireland AM. Thanks for staying with us. Still to come, she was dubbed the first rock chick and she might be slipping back into her iconic jumpsuit for us in a minute. Music icon Susie Quattro will be back on your telly shortly. And from the studio that brought you bugs with feelings, toys with feelings and even cars with feelings, Pixar's new film is all about elements with feelings. <laughs> We'll be looking at the best of the movies and tellies that's coming up next week. Now, Paul, what have you got going for us this hour? Good morning, you two. As Scully once said, the truth is out there. So today is World UFO Day. We'll be looking at the skies with astronomer David Moore to find out, is ET up there somewhere, David? We hope so, but well, today is World UFO Day, so it's early days yet. We have till midnight. We're open to everything. We're open to everything. Well, let's take a final look at your morning papers, starting with the Business Post, which leads with the headline, McGrath and Donoghue set to woo voters with €5 billion Euro budget package. The paper writes that the government is set to unleash a tax and spending package worth more than €5 billion Euros in a bid to win back angry voters ahead of key elections next year. On the front of the Sunday Independent is the headline, Cabinet to use special powers to probe RTE accounts. The paper reports that government is to invoke special powers to appoint an outside auditor to review RTE finances. Over to the Sunday Times, it opens with RTE bosses knew of Tuberty's secret payments three years ago. The paper writes that RTE knew it had published false salary figures for Ryan Tuberty more than three years ago, but failed to correct the public record and in doing so helped to conceal the existence of secret payments to its top presenter. On to the tabloids and the Irish Mail on Sunday leads with coalition plan to split RTE in half. The paper writes that the government intends to split RTE's public service and commercial functions in what is being called the biggest shake-up in the broadcaster's history. The Sunday Mirror goes with Tubbs Cuz Scrap TV Licence. It writes that Ryan Tuberty's cousin, comedian David McSavage, has called for the TV licence to be scrapped as public anger over the RTE salary scandal mounts. The Sunday World leads with Forbes calls in the lawyers. It states that lawyers representing ex-RTE director General D. Forbes have been in correspondence with the station, sparking fears she could now be set to sue her former employers. And finally, the Irish Sun on Sunday goes with the headline, McGregor puts boot into RTE. It writes that UFC star Conor McGregor has launched a foul-mouthed rant at snobby RTE amid the Tuberty payment scandal. Earlier on, we were talking about weddings, right? And oh, yeah. who you would leave to go see your weddings. I've jumped straight to this. Karen says, genuinely, and I can actually feel the word genuinely, I considered leaving genuinely. my wedding... Considered leaving my wedding reception to see Daniel <laughs> O'Donnell. My husband said he would annul the marriage if I even considered it. <laughs> oh, I don't blame him! <laughs> I says, uh, if Shania Twain had have clashed at my wedding three years ago, I'd have skipped the church and all. Oh. Woman, she makes me feel like a man. <laughs> uh, Melissa said I would skip my wedding reception to see Coldplay. Actually, I would even skip the ceremony to see them. You see, there's somebody else. Uh, love those lads so much. But would they not be on another night? Might be able to, like Harry Styles, they could have 
that couple could have gone to see him somewhere else. Or are they looking for an excuse not to spend the money? Uh -huh, Earlier on, we were talking about Twitter as well, and Shauna oh, makes yeah. a very valid point because uh, what's been happening with Twitter over the last couple of months, Shauna says, it's amazing how quickly Elon Musk has managed to flush $44 billion down the toilet. Yeah, yeah. on the feels like the like amount that. of uh, yeah. tweets you can read yeah. in a day. Or, uh, yeah, go yeah. On. Orla's written in the same. I hadn't realised how, quite how addicted <laughs> I was to Twitter until I was cut off yesterday. Only took a few hours for withdrawal symptoms to kick in. You yeah, too, don't you? Do you use Twitter? No, no. Gave up. I never it's understood just, it. I gave up because I just thought too much negativity, too much noise. And I'm not talking about ne negativity towards me. It's just, just what I was general. reading was yeah. just so negative. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. thought, no, do I need then this Then it can be life? really no. fun as well. It depends. It, it just depends on the day, doesn't it, I suppose? Uh, yeah. um, Sam says Musk clearly knows what he's doing every new mistake is disguised behind server uh, changes or whatever but he's fired half the team and the website will go will be gone by year's end however he'll yeah. be hopefully he'll be gone with it says Sam oh, anyway, Young Offenders and yeah. the open casting uh, Colin says what a, what a great call that was uh, so many talented actors never got the never get the opportunity to make it on screen so fair, fair we play love to, to the see it. Thanks so, so great much to chat to Hillary I love reading your we text. always love hearing from you uh, coming up we're catching up with the best rock star in jumpsuit this side of Elvis American singer Susie Quattro joins us after the break In the end, that was Shine a Light, the new track from Dream Team Combo, Susie Quattro and Katie Tunsell. And Susie herself is joining us now for a chat, but let's first take a look at some of her previous big hits over the years. <laughs> Susie Quattro, great to see you. I, I, there's nice. so many more we could have included. Can the Can <laughs> and that great song you did with Chris Norman, Stumbling In. Oh, yeah. So many great hits. I have to ask you, though, because we were chatting before we came to air, that dance routine for Devil Gates Rise. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Dave Neal came out from behind the drums. He just looked so awkward. <laughs> was that your idea? Awkward. No, that was Mickey Mouse decided to put a, a dance step to that uh, to that, and, and actually, when that appeared on top of the pops, that dance step and went straight to number one. So he was right. But the boys actually couldn't dance. I always said they look like West Side Story gone wrong. I could dance, they couldn't. It was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. But you got a number one out of it. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Susie, you've always got it. I mean, you're said to have even started the whole rock chick phenomenon in the 70s. I mean, you have to agree with that, Rice. Yeah, that's what I am. I, <laughs> I, 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 I will take to my grave the fact that I was not the first girl musician, but the first girl musician leading a rock band and having success. So, and I didn't even know I did that until my documentary came out in 2019, and I watched it on the big screen, and I went, I started to cry, because all these women were coming on and all saying that that they wouldn't have done what they did had it not been for me, and it made me really humble. And that's the first time I realized what I did. Yeah. Oh, what you did was phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm of a vintage that remembers watching Top of the Pops. Mm -hmm. A lot of glam rock acts, a lot of rock acts. And then Susie Quattro pops up and you're going, OK, this is different. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I mean, it's... Yeah, go on, yeah. No, it, the leather jumpsuit, right, because, I, like, I grew up an Elvis fan. Yeah. You were an Elvis fan too, and that's where you got your inspiration for that suit. Absolutely. Um, it was actually the comeback special yeah. that I saw when I was when I was 18. And uh, then I came to London. Mickey invited me here for a solo. And um, Can the Can was ready to, in the can. And uh, we, we discussed image. And 
Mickey said, what do you want to wear? And I said, leather. And he was against it because he thought it was old fashioned. And I insisted and I always get my way. And uh, then then he said, what about a jumpsuit? And I thought that that was a very sensible idea. And honest to God, until we got the pictures back from the photo session, I didn't know it was sexy. <laughs> what? You're like, it's I mean, functional. I, I can dance in it. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. You saw Elvis in the 68 special. That man looked incredible. I like I'm a man, did. and I thought, he looks brilliant. <laughs> he did. But I just didn't realize. I just thought it was sensible because I could jump around and everything right. would stay in one place. And I remember studying the photographs with Mickey with this little thing, you know, how you study the negatives. Yeah. And I went, and I went, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear! <laughs> what if I don't? You know? can, can I ask you because we, you're like like you said, you took your inspiration for, uh, from Elvis. What did you think of the movie last year? Mm. Oh my gosh, I got my opinion on it. Okay, um, the guy did a great job. I have to say, he did a great job. But I felt, just my personal, that he played it a little bit too one-sided. I don't think you got the sense of Elvis's sense of humor. Okay. And I thought that the argument with Priscilla came out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She She's a very good actress, but all of a sudden they're having this huge and nothing really led up to that very well. And for me, the real magic was at the end where they're very cleverly filmed. Oh. You're, wa you're watching oh. him play Elvis. And for a minute you're thinking, is that him or is that yeah. not? Is, and then all of a sudden it is Elvis. Yeah. And for me, that, that's when the magic and the tears came. Yeah, me too. I was the very same. I started crying when, that, when I saw that. I did too. Yeah. Well, when you saw him, you know. Yeah. And I know all Elvis's people. I was acquainted with everybody. Um, you know, I've been... He's been on my shoulder spiritually since the age of five and a half. Really? That's, that's, how, that's how it is. I got offered to meet him in 1974. He called me because All Shook Up was out uh, in America. And I said no, because I just didn't feel right. And I wrote a, a tribute to him called Singing with Angels. You can Google it. And I recorded that with James Burton and the Jordanaires in Nashville. Wow. Fantastic. Wow. I know. It goes on and on and on. All these epiphanies. Um, even when I got my part in Happy Days, I was on the set. I did my audition. I went back to my hotel room. They had to discuss me. Yeah. And uh, I was by the phone waiting for the phone to ring. And the phone rang. And they told me I've got the part for three seasons. And at that exact minute... The TV comes on and it says newsflash, the king is dead. Oh. Whoa. Well, no, wow. you can't write you can't no, write you this can't stuff. Write no, that. that's that's yeah. that's and I'm stuff. and I'm on Sun Records now. Well, wow. And he's such, <laughs> it just goes on. The legacy goes it on does. and on. And he's such a massive name in the industry, such a huge inspiration to you. And uh, you did mention earlier your 2019 documentary, a lot of women in the music industry mentioning your name, saying you gave them the confidence to stand out there. And you've influenced so many. Uh, but I do wonder, Susie, who has influenced you? Like, did you ever have anyone that you were inspired by? Or were you just starting it off yourself, off the bat? I, I, Elvis was my hero, but saying that, the thing with me is, I'm very open, very honest, and I knew from a very young age that I didn't have a niche in which to fit. So it made me search for my niche, and I found it, and here I am. Yeah, <laughs> still turning it I made, I, I made my own. If yes, you, you haven't did. got one, find it. Yes, I did. <laughs> well, let's... And, and no and I'm stubborn. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody will turn my light off. <laughs> Shine a light. That's what, in fact, that song came from KT and I discussing this subject. Yeah. Wow. About how, about how we all, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're straight, gay, black, white, doesn't matter. We all have a light. And that's what we're singing about. I mean, let's talk about that collaboration. How did you come to know KT Tunsil? Like, how did you guys meet? Well, oh, I love this song. We were, um, I was watching a rough cut of the documentary and all of a sudden KT was on it. And I thought, oh, cause I was a fan of hers. I didn't know she was a fan of mine. And we got together, a match, a match made in heaven, honestly. Wow. Okay. Look, you can see us. Yeah. We get along so well, yeah. Yeah, your, your son's involved in this as well. There he is, cute, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder when you're working with your son, is it a, a case where you're like, no, no, mother knows best, or is it, do you have oh, that equal partnership? I, I will pull the mother card when needed. <laughs> um, 
We, I was doing something the other week. It was a, some kind of TV thing, and I wanted him to come up and play with me because he's a guitar player, my co-writer and producer. He produced this album. And he didn't want to do it, and I did say, do it for your mother. <laughs> <laughs> has to be done. <laughs> and he did it. Yeah, he he did. did do it, yeah. Okay. It has to be done, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, we can't help but notice the, the gold discs on the wall. Uh, so is, is that is that your is that your go-to room um, when you you know want to relax or when you just want to remind yourself just what a career you've had? Um, this is just great dining room decoration. I saw it first at Mickey Most house, <laughs> and, it, and, and it really suits this room. But my go-to room is on the third floor of this house, and I have an ego room. Right. Okay. Tell us about Everybody, the ego room. Ev Everybody should have one. You go up two flights of stairs. You can nearly bang your hair. You can nearly fall over. So it's very, it sounds like an analogy, but it's true. And then you finally get to this big wooden door. And I had a little plaque made. And it says, ego room, mind your head. <laughs> so, and you go in. And the first thing you see is the big red book. So it's so appropriate. The big red book, this is your life from the okay. TV show. Wow. Amazing. And it's got everything. It's got guitars down here. A lot of bit different old jumpsuits and a happy days coat and and awards and DVDs and CDs and a big TV to watch both. Completely wallpapered and pictures and posters of me. And two things. It's the most peaceful room in the house, which is very strange. And then when I come out of that room, this is how I stay normal. I shut the door. Wow. Okay. Wow. It's uh yeah, that's fascinating. I love the ego room, mind your head. Uh, what a great thing. <laughs> it's brilliant. brilliant. Susie, I knew it would be an absolute delight to talk to you. Good luck with the new music. Uh, it just sounds so great. And uh, we, 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 with new music, we want a tour. We need to see you yes, back over this way, Susie. Yes, cannot wait for that. Thank I you know. so much. OK, I, you know, I'm I'm doing five gigs in, uh, in, in England and Wales for the end of the year in November to celebrate 50 years. Wow. Of can the can can the can being number one? Wow! In November, okay. I don't know if you want me to read them out quick or if you haven't got well, time. Well, we we need you in Ireland. You see, we need to get you to Ireland. But uh, oh. but for now, the music is out. Oh, I am in, in Ireland. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I am in. Where am I in Ireland? Where is it? Where is it? I can't find it now. I'm not going to find it quick enough. I am there. Hopefully, you're somewhere. in Dublin, Belfast, Dublin. I'm doing a um a festival somewhere. But I can't remember. You can Google it. We, we'll find it and we'll we'll okay. let people know we'll where they can go and see viewers, it. But we're Susie so Quattro, thanks so much for joining us. You My can pleasure. To see you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. And now you can catch Susie's new single, Shine the Light, wherever you get your music. After the break, is there a star man up there in the sky? Sounds like a cue for a David Bowie song. <laughs> uh, we're going on the lookout for UFOs in just a minute. Welcome back to Ireland AM. If you've ever been looking out the night sky and reckon you might have spotted a UFO, well, sorry to burst your bubble, but it probably wasn't ET. But because today is World UFO Day, we thought bring in the expert to tell us if we really are alone in the universe or if there might just be some Ewoks up there somewhere. <laughs> David Moore from Astronomy Ireland, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show and happy UFO Day. Happy <laughs> Thank to say. you very much. Now, first question, let's get it out of the way. Are we alone in the universe? Two answers. We're probably not alone in terms of being a biological life form in the universe. Yeah. But whether they're actually intelligent ones here buzzing the earth, abducting people, I'm a skeptic. Okay. I've been out in the dark on my own loads of times, defied the aliens to come down and get me for several decades, never even seen them, let alone being abducted. So I'll put my life on the line saying I don't believe they're out there. Yeah. But I know some people believe it passionately. That's so true, yeah. we, we have to go back and look at some of the famous sightings that have been before, like mm. starting with Roswell back in the 50s. What do you think happened there? And, you know, what's, what's kind of factual, what's not? Yeah, well, I've looked into the Roswell incident myself a bit. It wouldn't be my area of real expertise, but it was originally classified as a flying saucer. Then they retracted that. And later on, the investigation said that it was a weather balloon 
fact, it's part of a thing called Project Mogul, which was a balloon with some early radar attached. It was 1947, just after the Second World War. They'd only just developed radar. The British didn't even tell the Germans they had it. They didn't know why they were able to shoot down their planes so well. So this was all top secret. Yeah. So they wanted to cover that up, I believe. Now, it would be in my interest if aliens existed, because we'd become very popular then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't see it. I've seen lots of documentaries, read books, reviewed books for newspapers on the subject. And for me, you can explain the whole thing. And I've seen the scientists who built this craft saying that it was a radar weather balloon type operation. That was just top secret at the time. And you're a man of facts. I mean, you mentioned the British. Let's talk about an incident a little bit closer to home. There was one in Rendlesham Forest. Describe that one for us. Well, when you see this described, there are two military bases. And it, I think it's 1980, so it's in, at the height of the Cold War. Uh, so everyone's worried about there being Third World War, nuclear explosions, everything else. So things are a bit tense. And these soldiers see this light in the forest. And later on the next night, I think it is, they go out and they, they see it. And then there's one eyewitness, only one, who says he saw the officers talking to actual aliens. But when you look into it in detail, you find that there was a bright light in the area. It was a nearby lighthouse. That could have explained it. So I don't know if it was really aliens or it was a lighthouse that was mistaken. Uh, but you always find there's always a rational explanation for these things. Well, usually, rather than you know, bringing in extraterrestrial intelligence, which is such a huge thing to, to need to yeah. explain something. Yeah. He's kind of burst in my bubble here because I fully believe, I'm always like, oh yeah, bring on the aliens, I... let me know, Tell, bring them to Do her. you know what I think? I think, yeah, if there were, they wouldn't look like the big grey things with the big eyes and the small lips. Like, I think that's more of a, a, a television ide, ide, ideation of what an alien could be. Keeping on the Irish, is there any particularly famous Irish UFO sightings, though? Uh, there, there have been quite a few reports. The PSNI in Northern Ireland recently, yeah. about two years ago, I think it was, released all the si all the reports they had of aliens. Mm. And there were lights in the sky that we get reported about. We can explain them usually. But so some of them were, I remember one chap had rung in during broad daylight in Bangor to say there were aliens walking around the marina. So the police get reports like that on this island. Mm. Another one I know between Armagh and Nuri, a, a guy was driving down the road and I've seen him being interviewed live and he seems perfectly normal and reasonable. He had to stop his car because there was an alien blocking his way in the road. So people are seeing these things. And I've talked to one or two people who say they have seen things hovering over their houses. Uh, but I haven't seen them. And it makes you wonder, are they, is, is they dreaming? Is it something like deja vu? Yeah. I think the people are genuine and honest. But, you know, we don't, we don't have really significant evidence. No great photographs, mm. uh, no actual alien artefacts. Now, some people say it's all been hushed up, but I just don't go for yeah. that. For people, who, for people who do see things, like you said, that, that the chap in Bangor, should there be this, like, dedicated hotline where... Yeah. And it's, peop, it's people, you know, like yourself who could give a, a good answer back. Because they mentioned that in the paper in the today. Papers today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sort of. I mean, if the Irish government want to fund Astronomy Island, we'd love to take it up. <laughs> Paul David, he's your man. <laughs> but they're, your man. they're currently doing it in the US. Uh, they, they released a lot of... You might have seen the military footage of these craft flying across the sea at high speed, photographed by jet aircraft with very high tech cameras. Mm. And now they're trying to set up a, a system whereby everything's reported. But there have been other similar military investigations because if it was real, it would be a threat to national security. Yeah. We don't know if these are peaceful aliens or whether they're weather phenomena. So you have to find out. And for me, I think that's what's happened. And some of it's been hushed up and therefore conspiracy theories can run rampant. But David, now it is possible that a lot of these sightings are actually meteorites and shooting yeah. stars, but could you explain exactly how those work and why we see them? Well, I, I remember in 1993, front page of all the newspapers the next day with this huge light that shot across Ireland. And we thought maybe it was a satellite, but there was a famous newscaster, uh, Ken Hammond, yeah. who had seen it. He said it changed direction. Satellites don't do that. Things burning up don't change direction. But we, about a week later, we were able to talk into the US Air Force to find out a Russian rocket had gone awry. And instead of burning up over the ocean, it burnt up over Ireland and ended up over Spain. So we actually knew what it was. And when we explained it, before the internet, the, it, the, the story got in one newspaper on page seven. So you get front page headlines when it's seen, but the boring explanation a few days later yeah. doesn't get into people's psyche. Now, before we let you go, we have to ask you about the, the moon landing 
and mm. the hoax that you that you there well, with another <laughs> hoax it's a sore subject for you but and you actually got a handshake with Buzz Aldrin when talking with this story tell us about this oh yeah one of, one of the great things about uh, running Astronomy Ireland is that you get to meet some really interesting people. So I've shook hands with Neil Armstrong wow. and Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. Uh, there's me and Buzz. In fact, that was you 2000 and and two and 2004. And he's seen things in space, but he doesn't believe they're aliens, but they, they yeah. were un unexplained. And uh, the as for landing on the moon, I believe he and the other 11 of them did land on the moon. The, when you look into the people who say it was a hoax, you can actually shoot holes in some of the things they're saying. Like, why aren't there any stars in the sky? Because it's a snapshot photograph. You take a very quick snapshot photograph at night, you don't get stars. Yeah. And people who work in the video industry know this, and they're still promoting the fact that there's no stars in the sky. Bart Sabrell is the main one. Uh, and I was in, interviewing with, with Bart one day, and he, uh, he asked, well, why would I make it all up? And I said, Poss, I don't know, maybe the money. He says, I spent a million dollars on the video uh, documentary, and I've only sold $50,000 worth. And I said, good. David, we could chat to you all day long about this. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in on World UFO Day. It's been a pleasure. We'll keep watching the skies and do let Stormy on know if you do see anything interesting. Well, Call that hotline. We absolutely do. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you'd like more information from David and his team, you can check out astronomy.ie. After the break from aliens in the sky to demons in the mirror, we're going from sci-fi to more sci-fi as we look at what's coming to screens next week in just a little minute. I'm retiring. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? Same for the goddaughter. Dad told me you found something on a train during the war. A dial that could change the course of history. Why are you chasing the thing that drove your father crazy? Don't move. I need to get out of here. Stop! Sorry. Helena! Dr. Jones, get him. Us. They've made us cry over toy cowboys and clownfish, but with new film Elemental just around the corner, does Pixar still have the magic touch? Joining us now to break down the best of movies and tellies this week is bonafide Disney adult, it's Killian O'Sullivan. I should have been one of those people coming, like, you know, with the head-to-toe Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, like, dressed as Winnie the Pooh or something. Little hat on and all. Or, or, or on fire. <laughs> yeah, well, in keeping yeah, with the theme of this. Element. So, yeah, so this is, again, Disney... Uh, it, look, this is... The, they do these movies so well in the past. I haven't seen this yet, but it's got all the ingredients to be another little cracker, like Inside Out in the same way. Yeah. It's basically a really good way of visually representing, uh, in this instance, it's more visually representing socioeconomic classes. Yeah. yeah. So you've got the elements, fire, wind, water, earth, yeah, I don't know the periodic table, so I'm going to stop it's all there. there. It's all there, but, but one isn't allowed mixed with the other. Well, this is the thing. It's a, it's ultimately a Romeo and Juliet story about uh, fire and a bit of water that meet, and of course, those two things when they come together. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're never they're they're never in sync in real life. <laughs> so they're playing on that as well with this. And it, look, it's it's it just looks like based off the trailer anyway. Looks like a good fun family-friendly movie. So if you have nieces or nephews or kids, you want to, you know, distract them for an hour or two in the afternoon, this would be a perfect one. And watching this, they've really kind of kept this elements of real-life cities. The, the, big yeah. thing, the big thing they seem to be talking about is the design of this film. So this is it. So the fire world is kind of loosely based on a New York-style world. And funnily enough, they were doing all the research for this and all the animators who were building these worlds. This was all during COVID, which was a, a, yeah. an international pandemic that happened a couple of years ago. And really? You, you couldn't I've never heard yes. of her. No, 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 I'll tell no, you all there. Um, and because they couldn't travel to these locations where they'd usually go, travel, scout, take photos, and then rebuild these into a computer system. I think it's known as a jumpers. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, like a, a, a recce of sorts. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were watching YouTube videos. Be joking. Yeah. On so, Google Maps. So basically, like, they were watching, square. yeah, these kind of, you know, YouTube video tours of these cities, pulling all these point of references so they could rebuild them into this animated world. And you know what? It's worked. It just means that you're not going to get any glamorous recce in the future because if it's been done once through YouTube, <laughs> yeah, so rest assured they'll be doing it, it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But it's, 
It's in, it's in cinemas, though, this from, from... From Friday. From Friday. From Friday from next Friday. week. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Now, right, come this on. Is he, this. He's all over this. this is he loves this stuff. Like, uh, Into a bit of horror. Full disclosure, I didn't even watch the full trailer of this because I was like... You couldn't. No, nah, I'm tapped out. <laughs> uh, I was like, it's it's the trailer alone has more jump scares in it than I'd be comfortable with, so I can only assume the movie. Now, that always worries me because when they throw all the jump scares into the trailer, you wonder... Have they have they landed it? all? And the Insidious films, sorry to take your job, Kill, but the Shoot. Insidious films sometimes can be really, really good and really, really cringe. I'm hoping for a good review on this one. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> not a good start. Oh, well, I I won't watch it to give you that review. Okay, okay. Um, it's just look, some people like you, Paul, that like these movies, bloody love these movies. But for me, I get so sucked into watching a movie, and I know a jump scare is coming. That's why the trailer for me is triggering because I know that every time there's a scene where there's a slight lull in conversation, the tone starts to build, something's happening. Yeah, I'm like. Uh, any minute now, any minute now, and then it's like, do you want a cup of coffee? Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but again, for fans of horror, this kind of genre, as you said, in yeah. the, 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 this isn't the first of these insidious movies, um, and they've been met with mixed responses. But the thing about horror, though, is it's always going to be mixed. It's always going to be met with a mixed response. But the horror fans are the people who they are trying to, they're trying to kind of move it towards. And what's good about this is, like, you know, you have the likes of Rose Byrne, who we know from Bridesmaids and Spy, and even Hayama Bass, who's from Succession. They started out in the first insidiouses, and they've actually kept with the brand the whole way through. So they haven't kind of gone, oh, I've gotten too big, I'm going to move this on. This is something that we, you see a lot in the horror world. What is it about the horror world? Like Scream, you've got these, yeah. they can, people can then go on to have these huge careers, but they still feel sort of connected somewhat to... It's the horror fandom. It's the horror fandom. It's a, it's, it's a big world out there. But Insidious is out. It's in called was, The Red Door. The, the Red, Red Door. Door, yeah. Cinema's Friday if you fancy a scary date. Debbie, no, Debbie. I don't. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not right, well, I'm not going to you and I'll go to the no. Disney movie. You no. two can go to Elemental, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving to the Virgin Media, uh, Virgin Media Player, it's available now, The Deceived. See, so, yeah, this was actually out a couple of years ago. This is um, this was before Paul Maskell won his Oscar. So now, of course, it's like, oh, we have an Oscar winner, Paul Maskell, in this Virgin <laughs> Media drama. Um, yeah. Yeah, this, if you missed it first time round, you can catch this right now, streaming on your Virgin Media Player um, this evening. Only four episodes as well, so you'll get through it fairly quickly. Yeah, um, written by Lisa McGee. Well, this is it. And Lisa McGee, of course, of Dairy Girls fame, she did say, don't expect to go into this with a belly full of laughs. This is a very this different, very, very different. different type of show. This, Emmett Scanlon's character plays this uh, about to become a, a successful author, married to a successful author, and he has an affair with one of his students. She falls he's pregnant. He's a lecturer in, in college. He's, he's a lecturer yeah. in college. Uh, then his wife dies of very suspicious circumstances. Yeah, and, and then fire. there's all of these question marks around everything. And over the course of the four episodes, those questions are answered. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. better than these kind of four-parters where you're, you don't need to get too sucked into it. It's a quick it. watch. It's yeah. a quick watch. Is it as good as some of the other ones that are out there at the minute, do you think? Is, it is well, definitely worth a watch, yeah. It's definitely oh, yeah. worth there's, a watch. There's plenty of subplots going on. Paul Maskell actually plays a good part in it. So he does, it, He's ignored the accent, in it? He does it very well. Yeah, yeah. We he, love that. He, he hasn't got it, that it Julian is. Clary about him. No. <laughs> I don't think that would... I don't know why you're looking at me when you said it like that. <laughs> so we're going from the Virgin Media Player, available now, and we're moving to Channel 4, which starts this Wednesday at 10 o'clock. It's called The Change. So again, six episodes, so not a huge series for like to, that would take ages and years to binge watch. And this is brilliant. This is basically a really good representation, not that I can speak firsthand, of a woman going through menopause. Okay. So uh, in the teaser that Channel 4 sent me through, they have this voiceover of the husband who's on the phone to his mom, and he's saying, yeah, she basically has documented over the last 25 years every she what she calls invisible tasks so all the ironing all the cleaning all the mopping all the stuff she documented all the time it took her to do that in their life for the last 25 years oh. and now she's getting that time back so she goes to her old lockup she gets her old motorbike and she hits the road because she's like do you know what you know Time is coming to... Life's too short. Life's too short. Made, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this is and all off, off the cuff, cusp of, of thinking she... Uh, well, initially she thinks she has early onset dementia. She goes to the doctor and realises it's actually it's menopause, menopause is yeah. kicking in. Yeah. So then she's like, OK, well, I want to do something about this and reclaim her life. And it's a real kind of empowering, like, good on you. And there's a funny line in it. Because she's, she's a comic, the, the, the yeah, woman who yeah. wrote it. And she says, do you know what? I, the only person to really truly represent what it's like to have menopause on TV ever was the Incredible Hulk. 
And like that's yeah. the kind of tone of this. It's a dark comedy, <laughs> but it's uh, it is. It looks like it's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes you sense. can watch the first four episodes on all four, by the way, uh, on their streamer, and then uh, ten o'clock Wednesday, Wednesday, 10 Wednesday 10 the four. final two episodes. Killian, thank you so much. Great to see you. Legend as always. The telly sorted. <laughs> now earlier in the kitchen, we cooked up our homemade alternative to a shredded chicken takeaway. Here's our secret recipe. Place your sliced chicken in a bowl with ginger, soya and peanut butter, leaving it to marinate for 20 minutes. To make the satay sauce, whisk together the remaining peanut butter with coconut milk and grated ginger. To make the slaw, put the red cabbage, carrot and herbs in a bowl, later adding chopped mango and red wine vinegar. Fry off the marinated chicken until cooked through and then shred with a fork. Toast your pit of bread, fill it with the cooked chicken and drizzle with the satay sauce and peanuts, then you're good to go. They, were, they really enjoyed they it. They had them all there, didn't they? Yes. They milled it. <laughs> We, I think I missed out. Well, coming up tomorrow, actor Mary Murray tells us why she's just enough her communion dress. There'll be Wimbledon fashion trends in the catwalk and Derek's serving skills are being tested in a tennis challenge. All that plus the new sport and weather you're waking up to. Ireland AM is back in the morning from 7. We've had lots of texts in. Yes. And now we know where Susie's going to be playing. Susie yes, Quattro was talking to us a while ago. She's playing in Ireland and she's going to be in Donegal. Thank you, Eamon. For the Oak oh. Festival oh. this September. Yeah, yeah in, yes. in Donegal. This Another September. one on Susie Quattro. Jackie says, I've just listened to Susie Quattro singing with uh, singing with Angels, which was the tribute to for um, Elvis Presley. It's beautiful. Well worth a listen. Lovely tribute to Elvis. I really enjoyed the interview. Well done. Oh, we had a great chat with her. Yeah. I think she turned down a meeting with Elvis. Oh. Like. Oh, oh, oh. oh Susie. Maybe well, uh, on our UFO sightings, Ollie was saying, there's no way we could be alone in the universe. Just speaking statistically, there must be something else out there. And you know what? I agree with you. I'm in agreement with him. I was yeah. so kind of surprised that that um, that David kind of was like, oh no, wait, everything has an explanation. I'm like, no, don't don't burst my bubble. <laughs> don't burst I my do. bubble. I, do. I just don't think it looks like the aliens in the Simpsons. The thing is, the thing is, <laughs> like Mr. Burns. <laughs> they, they, they might have been watching us today, and they might be about to make that chicken sassy dish for lunch. Maybe. <laughs> we'll never know. Anyway, we're all done for today. Up the dubs. <laughs> have a good Sunday. <laughs>